Blessed greetings to the Sherry House family and friends. Abby and I welcome you to join us in this thoughtful subject, not the bad guy. <laughs> not the bad guy. When you have something go wrong, do you know who is the person that should be caused to blame for it? Do you look for it? Have you ever blamed God? We're going to take a look at not the bad guy. Father, dear, awesome and amazing God, we come thanking you and praising you that you love us with your own love, God. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for suffering for us, dying, rising, and washing away our sins, and still in moving us, Holy Spirit. Help us to know you love us. Help us to know that when we're sinning, you are speaking to us. And God, help us to appreciate that you sent Jesus to save us. And he is not the bad guy. You are not the bad guy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When I was in the fourth grade, uh, my Mrs. Early, my teacher, there's some things that happened, and I can't remember the details, but I remember she told me if I did not correct it, she was going to send me to Mr. Early. And he was her husband, he was over the shop, and he was known for having a little wood spanker. And... Uh, I didn't, I said, okay. Then I did a couple of things. She said, you got to go. And so I was really mad at her. And then as I was going down to his office, going down to the workshop where he taught people how to do woodwork and things like that, I was just looking at him and just thinking, I wasn't thinking he was a good guy. I was thinking he was a bad guy. <laughs> and you know what? Later on in life, I thought about it. She was awful good helping me. He was awful good because two times he gave me a warning. And then months later, I ended up getting a spanking. But, oh, by the way, what about God? When he flooded the whole earth, was he really a bad guy? You know, what happened? What was going on there? And here's what I understand is God is not the bad guy because Enoch walked with God and he was taken to heaven. We're going to take a look at Noah in Genesis 6, 5 through 8 and see what was going on here. There was wickedness all over the earth and God had let man go on. They was preaching to him, but man wasn't listening. And he kept on preaching to him. And then there was just one man left. And God, out of his love, grace, and mercy, mm -hmm. allowed that one man to be used that you and I are here now. And in verse 5, it states, Then the Lord, the one who, covenant-keeping God who keeps his word, saw the wickedness of man was great on earth, and that every intent of the thought of the heart was only evil. Listen to this. Only evil continually. <laughs> Only evil is bad. But it says continually, meaning without end. That's all man thought about was doing evil and not doing God's will. Okay? So if God judges you, who's the bad guy? Okay? <laughs> not the bad guy. Not the bad guy. God is not the bad guy. And verse 4 says, And the Lord, Yahweh, was sorry. He was overwhelmingly disappointed that he had made man on the earth. And how did he make man? Look at Genesis 1.26. He made us in his own image, okay? He was grieved, hurt deeply in his heart and sorrowful in verse 6. And verse 7 says, So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Wow. And he's both man and beast. So everything that creeped and everything in the air, it had to go. Only the, in the water live, Okay. For I am sorry that I have made them. It hurt him. Our Lord God who loves us so much. But look at God. But God in verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. He gave hope for you and I that we're here. Adam was the first. We came from Adam. But we got to remember that was Noah who was righteous. And we cannot blame God. He's not the bad guy that caused the earth. And I've heard people get mad when I'm trying to share and they didn't believe in God and said, if he really destroyed all the earth, did he really love us? Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. God is not the bad guy. No, he's not. And to me, he's the ultimate father. Doing yes. everything to give his children an opportunity to do the right thing. Yes. And sometimes when it's apparent that those opportunities will not change the child, he has to do something <laughs> that will make him look like the bad guy when he really isn't. Yes. Any parent can identify with this. I have been that child and I have been that parent. The <laughs> residence of the early age was that child, living life any way they wanted to, and God had to do something. God loves us. However, he cannot li allow us to live our lives ungodly and go unscathed. Although his grace abound, I'm confident that God is not the bad guy. 
Amen. that he is long suffering with us, that he loves us, that he wants us to draw to him. Because Romans 5 8 says Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, not after we stopped sinning. <laughs> There's Amen. a quote in the movie Freedom Land where Samuel L. Jackson was uh, just talking about some of his past mistakes. And he said that God's grace is retroactive. His grace is sufficient for our past sins, is present for our present sins, and it will be available to us for our future sins. We have all done things that grieve God's hearts, that needs God's grace, is present, is future, is past. So if you are a child or if you are the parent, know that God loves you more than what you will ever know. He cannot, but he cannot abide our sins. He can abide in no unclean thing. And it pains him when he has to separate himself from us. Yes. So acknowledge your sins, repent of them, and don't grieve your father. Amen. And Mr. Early, you are not the bad guy. Mrs. Early, you are not the bad guy. Guess who was? Mm -hmm. Here's some takeaways I encourage you to understand and embrace. Number one is obedience is costly. It can be costly. But disobedience costs far more. Number two, we should grasp God's promises and favors by faith and never judge God. Lastly, God has shown us every good reason to put our life in his hands now and forever. No matter what happens, God is not the bad guy. Father, thank you for abiding with us, Lord, and for giving us every opportunity to come to you, Lord, and ask for forgiveness, repent of that sin, Lord. Your grace is sufficient, Lord, and you abide with us and, long, and suffer with us long, Lord. And I yes, thank you for that, Father. You're so good to us, and I thank you for your goodness. Help us to be better, Father, and not to grieve you, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.